you know, with uh, time sensitive. So the three people that never want to speak, you know, uh, if you just stand, you get uh, you get two minutes. Two minutes is, you know, have your remarks that you just make. So, you know, if you want to just say something, just stand up. There's three people, right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, well, of course, that was my Uncle Ben. Um, I truly, you know, love my Uncle Ben. He was one of a kind, uh, very dramatic. But uh, I thank God that throughout the years, I, I was able to see how he allowed the Lord to start, you know, allow the Holy Ghost to start making that change in his life. And then, you know, when I first talked to Uncle Ben, you know, he had a lot to say. He had a long story. I remember one time he was going out to the country. I don't, I don't even know if I had got a chance to say a story myself. <laughs> he talked all the way going and talked all the way. <laughs> so that's the memories I'm going to keep with him. But I know as time was getting closer, you know, I saw the Lord truly working in his life. And the last time I, you know, got a chance to really talk to him for a while was back in August. And he said the only thing that matters now is making it to heaven and getting his life together and doing what's right. So I, I thank God for allowing me to see that change in my uncle. And he was always, always good to me. I never, he never did anything so, you know, wrong or anything to me. So I thank God for that and I appreciate him. In Jesus' name. Surrounded by the ones 
your love for me the most. And here we are right now. We're here because we love him. Right. In Jesus' name. So we thank you, Lord, for we just having a, having him in our lives and you know, give us encouragement and bless us in Jesus' name. And, you know, we are gonna miss him, but you know, he won't be forgotten in Jesus' yeah, name. We'll see him again on the other side. We live the life in Jesus' name. Well, I guess uh, now we'll change the order of service to uh, to the, the choir singers in Jesus' name. So let's uh, greet the choir with a praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord.
has there was very great love because he's going to bring the uh, cost to you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. We thank God for Jesus. Yes. I really thank God for Jesus. Amen. We thank God for our brother that later on in life had a chance to be an influence to me. And we were next to each other. Me and Benjamin. And our little brother, me and him, we used to get into a lot of stuff. And my father told us, I'm going to knock some sense in your head. And we thought those were just words. And we were outside the church in Cleveland, Ohio one day, and you know how boys play, so Ben did something. I picked up a rock, and I lined him up very carefully. And when I launched it to throw it, he moved out of the way, and I hit one of the saints' car. And it seemed like a hand from out of heaven hit me upside the head. Instead of me getting straight, what went through my mind was, you know, the cartoons are right there. You do see stars. That was our little brother, Benjamin. And when we were in sin, by the grace of God, he came down to the country when we were running from the Lord. And a lot of times, you ain't got to have or make a sermon. You just need the light to shine through it. That was his text, as they said, that Ben would preach, and that was, let there be light. And he showed the light. And we're here today to talk to you about death. And the thing about death is this. All of us should be upset with death. And what brought about death was sin. So that means that all of us should be agitated with sin. Because it, it causes this separation. But God had a vaccine for that. And that vaccine was called J-E-S-U-S. -S. That's the same vaccine that's needed now. And this is the reason why we're wearing masks is because of sin. Why don't they not preach it in different churches? I find it amazing that people would say that all you have to do is accept Christ in your heart, and you're safe. I ask the people, what do you do on the weekend when you're in sin? Do you tell them to stay at home? When you're in the wrong bed, do you tell him to move out of the way and go in the other room? No, when you let him in, when he said, behold, I stand at that door not. When I come in, I'm going through every room by the grace of God. He goes through the bathroom, the living room, whatever room you got by the grace of God. We're talking about death. You want to be upset. Let's go through the history. Mankind's DNA, and we live in an age where we understand DNA, has been corrupted. It was corrupted back in the dark. When God told man that the day he eat of that fruit, ye shall surely die. He might have thought it was a joke, but God put him out and he put him out the garden because of sin. And from that point on, man started to die. But God had a remedy for sin. And that really, we call the good news. It is good news when somebody can free you from alcohol. It's good news when somebody can free you from drugs. It's good news when somebody can give you a hope 
The sinner's prayer, that's not in the Word. I've been asking the Lord, Lord, what should we focus on up at 3 o'clock in the morning? See, this is what separates holiness from everything else. I've been to what they call the higher schools of learning. I've heard the talk on how our belief is older than your belief. We're here to straighten that out right now. Before Hinduism was around, Jesus was here. Before Buddhism was here, Jesus was here. Before Catholicism was here, Jesus was here. So I dare anyone say that they were here before God because he was in the beginning. He is the creator. Before he created anything, he was there. So your belief was what? Is older than what? I don't think so. What preachers don't preach, and if they're not preaching this, where you are, you need to run. They got people thinking that everybody goes to heaven, and that's not so. We're here to preach the word today. The purpose of Jesus coming, let's go to Matthew 1 and 21. We ain't got a time limit, so we're going to get this thing right. Matthew 1 and 21. And why is that important? You know, a lot of people say, I'm going to tell you something. This still amazes me. The most valuable thing you have, no, it's not that house, not that car. It's not your family. It's your soul. The scripture said, what can a man exchange for his soul? But yet, when it comes to finding out where you're going to spend eternity at, we don't even have a lot. We don't know the word. But we're going to write this vision and make it plain today. Matthew 1 and 21 says, and she shall bring forth a son I'm not there. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save, which means deliver his people from their sins. So when you're saying that you're saved, you're saying that you're delivered from sin. If you're still living in sin today, you are not saved according to the scriptures. And we're going to write the vision and make it a little bit more plainer for you. Because we don't want you to end up like that man did in St. Luke or Luke chapter 16. If you're not familiar with the story about the rich man and Elijah, both died and the angel took Lazarus off in the bosom of Abraham. And the poor man went to hell. I find it very fascinating. I've been to a lot of funerals, and so far everybody goes to heaven. Something's wrong with that story. Because it doesn't match up with the word. The word said, wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, not a few, there be that follow that in. It said, but straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. 
something to make it plain. Now I would like for you to turn to 1 Corinthians. I know you if your church, if ministers ain't preaching this, you need to run. You need to run somewhere where somebody's preaching the truth. What well, is true? Jesus said, thy word is true. You cannot claim to be saved if you're living in sin. Let's go to the scriptures. We're going to go over some 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He said, you know what? Preacher, don't touch on that. But we will today. It says, no ye not, starting in verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You need to know it. You're going to know it today so you can receive, to receive God's blessing, or you keep playing, as one minister said, God knows how to put an end to sin, and it's called death. Don't you get caught on the wrong side of eternity by the grace of God. We're here to let you know that it's what's in between you being born and dying, that's what you're going to be judged on. You're going to be judged on God's word. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, but don't you be fooled. Neither fornicators. Let me break that down. If you're having sex before marriage, you're not getting in the kingdom. You need to repent. Amen. That means you need to turn as one minister preached the sermon at the next stop line. You need to stop and turn right on straight street. Stop playing Russian roulette with your soul. Can't no preacher put you in heaven and hell. Amen. But God can. Amen. And that's not even the final resting place. Because all of us got to die. We're talking about that second death. The lake that burned with fire and brimstone. If you have a sex before marriage, that's what the word says. Don't you be fooled. You're not getting it. God kicked the devil out. And he's going to let you in? You're going to change things? You don't even have the power of an angel. Now he's going to let you in? Jesus told the people of the world, he said, I have hell Satan falling as lightning from the sky. You have to get him out of there. And a third of the host of angels. This is why the world is messed up now. People want to have sex before marriage. Yeah. The word of God said in the book of Hebrew, marriage is honorable. And the bear on the fire. But whore mothers are adultery. God's going to judge you. That's what his word said. God got a place for sinners. That's what hell is for. Hell is a prepared place for unprepared people. You will no longer, after you leave here, say, I wasn't told the truth. So far it is. Idolaters. Putting anything before the Lord. The scripture says, Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't try to put the cart before the horse. You need God in your life. He makes a difference. I live in again. No adultery. You know what adultery is? Man? Sex after marriage. You're cheating on your spouse. You made a vow to the Lord. You might have thought it was a joke when you stood before Whoever and made a vow, you made that vow unto God. Yeah. To honor and the church won't be no adulterers in heaven. I can assure you that. Yeah. Not because I said it, because the word said it. Yeah. And I'm here today to tell you, you need to stop looking at the cross and get pick up your cross. Yeah. 
may change, but guess what? The word don't change. The word says, forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. You can't change it, I can't change it. So adultery's not getting in. No effeminate. No abusers of themselves with mankind. I was sitting out in the car one day at Kroger's, and the Lord let me know, in the beginning I made them male and female. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. The Word of God said we ought to obey God rather than man. God didn't make Evie and Stevie. He made Adam and Eve. So if you got the wrong spirit in you, that's what the gospel is for to get it out of you. I know why God is a deliverer. Because I used to be an alcoholic. I was on drugs. Them cigarettes was hard to quit. I know what the gospel can do. I know what Jesus said he would do. He would deliver his people from their sins. Lord, this is what I want you to do. I want to take some cigarettes and throw them in the garbage. And see, same time, no. Those who are watching by YouTube, that the prayers of the righteous avail to us. Because Jesus' word is true. He left the 99 sheep and he came and found me. The Lord appeared to me in a dream. People might say, what did he say? He didn't say anything. I looked in his eyes and I fell on my knees. Why? Because the word of God said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You better do it while the blood is still running warm in your veins. If your preacher isn't preaching this, you need to run. Run for your life. They're not preaching repentance. you got to stop sinning. Put ice over the cake all you want to as long as you can't it all in. If you haven't repented of your sins. So let's go on with this list. Because my time, I'm keeping out. Doing pretty good so far. Effeminate. That's active and passive. Homosexuality. No thief. If you're a thief, you ain't getting that. Because you're allowed to get up there trying to pickpocket the wrong person. It ain't gonna happen. Covetousness. You want something somebody else got Amen. instead of going to get your own husband or wife. You want to lust after something that's not yours. The word of God said, let every man have his own wife. Get your own wife. No, you want to sit up there and lust after somebody else's wife. You ain't gonna get up there. Not because I said it, the word said it. Don't you be fooled. Or you can fool yourself. I've seen and heard that if you pay the funeral home enough money, this is not a knock on you all. They'll crown you. Like, what do you mean crown? They'll give you a crown. I can guarantee you that crown is going to lay in that casket until it turns to dust if the Lord don't come back. But the crown that the Lord is going to give you, it won't fade away. That you don't have to stay on that list. Yeah. Because that's what you call death row. See, it's easy to watch programs and see somebody get to death on a death row. But, but if you live in sin, guess what? You on death row.
scripture says no man. You can't serve two masters. Amen. So you mean to tell me you got God in you on Sunday and the rest of the week you got the devil in you. Well, our father had a song for that. He said, I got to live the life that I sing about in my song. I can't go to church Saturday, Sunday, go out and get drunk and raise hell on a Monday. Yeah. Can't do it. Ain't gonna be no beer bottles up in heaven. Yeah. Ain't gonna be no perverts up in heaven. Yeah. Ain't gonna be no child molesters up in heaven. Yeah. I've heard the song before, the Lord bless us to cross over. And I don't have to mention the artist's name, but they call it Soul Heaven as if they're gonna have a collection of blues singers up in heaven. You can believe that if you want to. But I hear the flames are so hot in hell. Anybody got no time to be thinking about no blues? No. Or no R and B. No. I seen them songs out there. I was a temptation saint. And when I got saved, the Lord said, Son, did you really know what you were singing? I said, No, I know people were hollering and scooping like it was up. He said, Now let's go over them words. You tell me where them words come from. The temptation you can have a song, I know you're going to leave me. But I refuse to let you know. Only the devil will say something like that. I'm going to tell you another thing, too. Saints, we praise God in the spirit. In church. Who do y'all think y'all praise when you're out there? Put your hands in the air. Let me tell you something. That death angel is walking around here. You play the COVID-19 all you want to. If COVID-19 don't get you, they got people, isn't that something that will get in the car, drive all the way from the suburbs of Dallas, all the way to El Paso to kill a lot of people in Walmart. You don't know what day and time or your expiration date is. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Word says you need to be ready. Yeah, it says seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Not you, Father. Yeah. You may be found. It said, call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man out of thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. If you're on this list, you are going to end up in the wrong place. I thank God our brother Benjamin. He got his priorities in order. That little dash, born between born and dying, somewhere along that period, you better get the blood of Jesus on you. Somewhere through that line, you're going to need to repent. And if your ministry isn't preaching repentance, you need to get out of that because this is where it started at. It started in Jerusalem. Yes, Jesus told his disciples that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Yes, Not wrong. A lot of time we talk about the Catholics. Lord help us. It's that Protestant movement. The first group that broke off from the Protestants were the Anabaptists. You still buying a used car. But this time you're buying a used religion. God didn't come to bring religion, He came to bring salvation. If you're on this list, you need to repent. Because if you get caught in the bed with the wrong person, you're going to hell. Not because I said it, but the word said it. So thieves, no. Covetous, drunkards, revivers. Those are verbal abusers. Cussing. I mean, some people are just, like my wife told me, she said, you cuss bad. I didn't believe it. I said, I tell you what, next time we hold a conversation, this is before we got saved. Now, we ain't cussing now by no means. We praise the Lord. But when she brought it to my attention, I couldn't even have a conversation because I was just cussing that day. She said, you use them hard words. Some people they said, you know, I don't do none of that. You still going to hell if you don't get this out of sin off of you. Everybody was waiting on the blood of Jesus. Before the Lord came back, people went 
in the 16th chapter of St. Luke, when you died and you were faithful, you went in the bosom of Abraham. That was still on the level where hell was because they were having a conversation with this rich man and he said he was inflamed, he was being tormented. Do you want to be tormented? Come on. You need to repent. He tried to dress it up. This education down here is all right to a certain extent, but my father, like the education without salvation is damaged. Let's finish this list. I'm moving along here. God grace God. No extortioners. You know what extortion means? Blackmailing someone. What why they couldn't call it red mailing? Blackmail. Well, that's what I said. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. You're not getting in the kingdom of God. You can try to fool yourself. You go back home and say, well, my preacher don't say that. Well, let me tell you something. Your preacher ain't got no heaven and hell to put nobody in. I'm going by what Jesus said. Because that's the only one that I know who rolled away from the, rolled the stone away. That's the only one that I know that was able to say, no man takes my life. He said, I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'll pick it up. All of these false religions, those leaders are buried somewhere. Isn't that something? Are you going to serve somebody that's going to lay down the same way you are? I can't do it. But you can go over to Jerusalem and you won't find Jesus. Because he ascended up unto the heavens. And he said all power in heaven and earth is given unto him by the grace of God. And all of us got to die. Some people say that. Oh, I know we got to die. But it's what after death that you need to be concerned about. Because we know, according to the scriptures, hell is somewhere down here on earth. But that's another lesson. You need to come and hear that. Now, this is what the scripture says. And such were some of you. I'll be the first one to confess I was. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. You better watch something about those sanctified people. Sanctified means you've been set apart. Holy means you're pure. So like the holiest people, they scare me. They jump up and down, making all that noise by the grace of God. Let me tell you something. You need to be holy because God is holy. That's what the word says in the book of 1 Peter, the first chapter. As it is written, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. For it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Our God is a holy God. You need to be holy because he's holy. Amen. Stop looking for excuses to sin. I was up reading in the book of John. It was talking about those who didn't like the light because they loved darkness because their deeds were evil. But when you're living right, you ain't got nothing to hide. You can sleep good at night. Isn't that something? God gives us protection. It says the angel of the Lord encamped around them that fear him. You don't know what time death is coming to get you. You were told to be ready. People say that man's trying to scare me. You need to be scared. One preacher said, I'm trying to scare the hell out of you. Oh, hell is in the Bible. You don't need that torment. You need to get your life right. You need to repent. If that preacher isn't preaching repentance, he ain't preaching what the Lord told his disciples to go and preach. They want you to think that you can serve both masters. The word of God is against it. You can't do that. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. I want to conclude the book of Acts. I done told you about the bad list, but we got a solution. The Lord left the solution, Acts, the second chapter. And I'm going to start reading at verse 36. It said, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, without a doubt, that God had made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. If you understand what Lord and Christ, we see everybody didn't know who Jesus was. Oh, Dalton Thomas, he wasn't around when Jesus came after he rose from the dead, and they saw him. He said, except I see it with my own eyes, I, I'm not going to believe it. And later on some days, Jesus showed.
showed up. And he called Thomas. He said, Thomas, come here. Uh, take your finger and stick it through the hole. And take your hand and stick it through my side. And after he did that, Thomas confessed. He said, my Lord and my God. Amen. Who are you going to believe, one of the twelve or somebody that's preaching some other doctor? Because every disciple, every apostle preached repentance. You got to repent. That means you got to come to the end of yourself. Yeah. See, we so caught up in satisfying our flesh. Do you not know that flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The flesh knows that. This is just the house that men used to live in. Don't you want that house that's not made by hands? That's eternal in the heavens? I don't know about you, but Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or blemish. So we thank the Lord for our brother Ben, by the grace of God. Let all the house of Israel know sure that God has made that same Jesus, whom we have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they didn't go say, you know what? They didn't go, my preacher said, I ain't going to do that. Uh, these people want to be saved. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. That's not they saw. Because unless God deals with you, you can be sorry one day and tomorrow you're back to the same thing. And said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brothers, what shall we do? These men walked with Jesus. They ate with Jesus. They slept with Jesus. They seen what Jesus can do. And you gonna tell me what your reverence said? Let me give you, let me get something straight. There's only one mention in the Bible about a reverend, and it was referencing God. It said, Reverend and holy is he. You better be concerned what Jesus said. And these 12 men, when the people asked them, men and brothers, what shall we do to get this thing right in our lives? Then Peter said, verse 8, and to them, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward or perverse generation. You think COVID-19 is bad. You stay and wait. We got some. God's getting ready to really crank this thing up. Oh, you think you're going to be all right when you get that vaccine? God can shut down bars and they try to get them open. Can't get your groove on, can you? You got time to repent. That's the groove that you need to get on. You need to repent. And if your preacher not preaching repentance, you need to run for your life. Amen. Because you know who that's telling you you ain't got to do all those things? That's the devil. Amen. And the word of God said, War to the inhabitants of the earth and sea, for the devil has come down having great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Amen. He wants to take you with him to hell, but hell isn't the final, it's not the final resting place. Amen. It's the late that burn with fire and brimstone. And you're going to burn forever, forever, forever. You say you're trying to scare me? No, that's the word. It's going to happen. Just like you got a point. All of us got a point. And you know what about this point? I don't care if you're a president. I don't care if you're a lawyer. I don't care whatever you are. Right? If you're a senator, whatever the case is. The word of God said, no man has the power. No man. When death comes, no man has that power to say you are not going to die. No. The scripture says there's no discharge. You can't retain that spirit. Some people are about to try to fight. I ain't going to die. No. The scripture says no man has the power to retain the spirit. Neither has he power in the day of death. For there's no discharge. you got to pay that cost. That's why you got to live right. I'd rather tell you the truth. Don't get 
down in hell like the man did in St. Luke, when he figured he couldn't get out, all of a sudden, guess what? He got a little religion. He wanted to help out his brothers. Boy said, no, they got Moses and the prophet. If they don't listen to them, by the grace of God, hey, they got the same opportunity you had. That's why it was essential that you hear this word today. So when you stand on a day of judgment, you can't say, nobody told me. I want to thank the Lord that by the grace of God, we know we have against time. And I still want us to hear, I know we didn't want to press it by the grace of God. I don't want to hear, but I want to hear from our apostle. By the grace of God, we all came up, same household, under holy people. It's a blessed man, raised up with a father and mother who lived a holy life. I thank God for it. For you young people, you're talking about an inheritance. That's the inheritance that you want. By the grace of God. The rest of the things that you want to have an opportunity to live forever. So at this time, we want to hear from our Apostle David. We've got a few minutes there. Get the car. We blow on pretty good there. In Jesus' name. At this time, let's receive our Apostle David's words of praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. about normal funerals. A lot of people don't like going to funerals or they get upset. And I guess most of them should be upset because they're not ready. Mm -hmm. Amen. But as we like to share with people, it's the second death. This is the first death. Mm -hmm. Y'all know that? Mm -hmm. This is the first death. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a second death. And no, most people are not even prepared for it because the false prophet don't even know. Amen. They even prepare to be. Praise the Lord. There's going to be two deaths and there's going to be two resurrections. Amen. And the Bible always tells you the right choice, doesn't it? Yes. Amen. That's what I like about God. He, 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 he discloses everything up front. Yeah, Lord. You know how the devil is. He, he attempted to do something and then when it falls apart and everything starts to collapse. He, he's no way around. Oh, <laughs> Amen. You've seen them commercials where they talk so fast you, you don't know what he said. <laughs> or the fine print that you can't read. And even if you got 20 20, Amen eyesight. Unless you get this. I, I think I was such a genius. She finally just went out and bought a big magnifying glass. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, so I went out and bought me one too. I said, I, I want to know what this says. Praise the Lord. But God is not like that. Yeah. He always tells you up front. Yes, he does. Yes, yes, thank you, Lord. Amen. Hey, Don't you like a God like that? Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hey, he said, if you sin, you go going to die. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The wages of sin is death. Yes. yes. I like that. Amen. Hey, Amen. I, I don't have to go out and sin and then get called and say, well, why am I dying? What's, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. I already know. I got to work. Amen. Amen. Hey, Two deaths. Two resurrections. The Bible declares, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first yes. resurrection. On such the second death will have no power. Amen. So in order to escape the second death, I got to be in the first resurrection. Amen. In order to be in the first resurrection, I got to be blessed, I got to be holy. Yes. Thank God for the word. Tell me how to be holy. How to be saved. All you young people here. I used to be young. Praise the Lord. But I thank God for calling me out that world of sin. Amen. At 25 years of age. And the day people, when they're 25, they, they hot foot is just getting going. And they don't recognize. The Mars is not promised to you. Three score and ten people claim that. 
Well, you know, only 20, and I, you know, I, I can make it to 67. The Bible says tomorrow is not promised unto you. There's no guarantee you're going to live that long. A lot of people die way before 60 and 70. Praise the Lord. Young people, hear me now. I, 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 I have always shared with people I told them. And yes, God can, he can take some saints out of here too. Yes. And, and they can be saved, all right. But he just cut them off. He, he lets you know, I, I'm a just God. I'll grab one of mine too. <laughs> Young people think they're immune. Mm -hmm. This virus is teaching people that God wants your attention. Mm -hmm. And he know how to get it. And I've been sharing with people because we in the book of Revelation, that things are going to get a lot worse than COVID before amen end comes. Amen. Some of those seals and trumpets, amen, praise the Lord, these things have been slowly happening over time, and because they haven't hit the whole world, we say, I, I don't get it. But you're not going to miss, amen, when those four angels are loose around the river you pray we know mostly that's where Islamic people live today. But the Bible say they want those four angels are going to be given power to kill a third of mankind. This is about seven billion people on this planet. And a third of that's going to be over two billion people killed. I say to myself, you know, praise the Lord, you get the reading about stars falling from the sky and hitting the earth. I say if a star really hit this earth physically, it would destroy the whole planet because of the size. And so, you know, in our meditation about that, the Lord says, so what is a star? I said, well, basically it's a nuclear furnace. And he said, that's what you need to think about. You need to think about the nuclear reaction. Amen. They don't lose some of these nukes. A third of the host of the earth, inhabitants of the earth, are going to be killed. You think anybody's going to miss that? No, you're not going to miss that. CNN and make sure you know Fox News, everybody, they got social media. <coughs> Praise the Lord. You need to be getting ready. Yeah. This world is about ready to take a turn. People are caught up in the presidential election. I tell you, I tell people, well, God will put one in and he'll press down on accelerator to push us closer to prophetic <coughs> time. And then he'll put another one in there, put his foot on the brake. Amen. Trying to slow it down. But I tell you, you're not going to miss God's down. Right. Whatever he said, that's what's going to happen. All right? That's right. You need to get ready, young people. Amen. You need to get ready. Amen. amen. To my sibling brothers, if you listening, amen. Praise the Lord. We'll be down to four brothers in the family now. Huh? Yes. yes. Sisters holding up pretty strong by the grace of God. Amen. But you need to be running, brothers. Amen. amen. You need to be running. God has put a charge upon this family, going back to our maternal grandfather, Amen. Bishop Joseph Miller. Amen. He served the Lord. He loved the Lord. God has called him out of bad doctrine. Praise the Lord. And God has been moving in this family. You know, to whom much is given, much is required. That's why we preach the way we do. Amen. These false prophets out here collecting money, and I tell people, praise the Lord, no Gentile on this planet oh. has any authority from Scripture to collect one tithe. Yeah. And you know that was free of it. And that's why I preached over here. I said, wait till they read the Bible and find out more than one. Yeah. They're going to be coming back for them. Yeah. And I've heard a few start to try to warm the people up, but they, they don't warm up too easy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're struggling with that one tithe. Amen. That was only commanded to be received by the Levitical priesthood. Yes. And how dare any of these false prophet Gentiles rob the people and then lie to them so they're not even saved. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the word. Brother, you watching the time? Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Watch that time. Should have left me on that bench. <laughs> we love you so. That's why we tell you the truth. We're not in it for the money. We're not trying to profit off of your soul. 
We thank God for our brother Ben. You know, I wasn't as close to him as L. Edwin. That's why I shared with him. What do you need to do to you? But I know going back uh, last year, I called him one day and I said, you know, we got to talking. And uh, Sister Candace, you're right. Uh, I did more listening <laughs> than I did talk. And I was fine. Oh, yeah. you know, I hadn't talked to him in a long time. So I, I talked to him a long time. I, I was surprised. And I came away and I had to tell my brother, I said, I didn't know he was at that place where he was. Yes. Spiritually. Yes, Lord. I said, he was more spiritual minded. A lot of these people walk around here thinking they all that. Yes, yes. And so I had a number of those kind of conversations with him, and I was always impressed because he was facing death. Oh, yeah. And he knew he had to be serious. Yeah. But you facing death too. Why don't you sit? Yeah. Why don't you serious, young people? Yeah. You facing death. Amen. But God has made a way. Yeah. Again, you want to be in the first resurrection to avoid the second death. Yeah. And so we thank God. May yeah. God bless my family. You know, I, I've never met all of Brother Ben's family. Amen. So if you happen to see me pass by, just say, you know, I'm Amen. One day. He's <laughs> left you to bring the Lord. It's beauty, I know. Praise the Lord. I, I didn't know. I never met his son. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for all things in Jesus' name. Be blessed to the Lord. Amen. And you're right. We, we, we got, we're always rushing funerals. But read the Constitution bylaws, what we said about ministers. It said we need to make arrangements for funeral homes, and we have to praise God all day and bury him the next day. We're <laughs> <laughs> not going to be rushed <laughs> children to Antonio Mary, Angel Joseph Mitchell, Tiara S. Anderson, and Major S. McQueen. His first son and as a child was left as a wife. Benjamin served in the military as a United States Marine. He was a paramedic, EMT, a firefighter, and a certified HVAC technician. He also certified as, a tech, as an electrician and certified in plumbing. He worked for the Metropolitan Housing Authority Dark and T.S. Dot, and in the oil field. Benjamin Lee Anderson departed this life on November 16, 2020. He was preceded in death by his father, Claude H. Anderson Sr., his mother, Pauline Bill Anderson, and his brother, Aaron A. Anderson. He leaves the mourn five children, Antonio, Angel, Joseph, T.L., and Major, nine sisters and brothers, and a host of grandchildren, and nephews, and 